hope you guys are having a good evening. Sorry about the issues. I don't know, I'm using a new system. Like there's a new live control panel on YouTube and um, apparently I had the camera set up incorrectly. So I wanted to just uh, get that situated. So, all right. If you are new to this channel or you are new to the story, there is a young girl that's at the center of a um, dispute in the state of Indiana. Her name is Natalia Grace Barnett, and she is a young woman who was adopted by a family out of the out of Ukraine um, in 2009, I think, 2008, when she was six years old. She was brought over from Ukraine to the United States. Um, <clears throat> And there's been a lot in the headlines, in the tabloids, and a lot in the media about whether or not she's actually an adult, whether or not she is a child. Um, the media has been portraying her as the orphan um, sent from Ukraine to start a scam against this family um, and try to threaten to kill them. and do all of this nasty, terrible stuff and um, pretend to be a child when she's not. They call it the dwarf scam. Um, she is being painted in the media as a psychotic young girl that tried to kill her parents. And it's been really unfortunate. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm a parent of a child that has disabilities and the ableism and the really disgusting way the media has talked about her as like the con dwarf or the psychopathic dwarf or the crazy dwarf. You know, it's it's not only um, dehumanizing to call someone by the name of their disability, but it's also really disrespectful given the fact that we actually don't know the full story. We don't know whether or not she's um, a child or an adult. And calling someone a dwarf and using those sort of derogatory statements in the 2019 is just completely inappropriate. We do not call people dwarfs. It's ridiculous. So here's what's going on. The little girl was adopted by a family um, from Ukraine. She was around six years old, brought to the United States. The uh, adoption fails and she ends up with another family and eventually <clears throat> is back in an adoption agency and needs to be emergency placed and this family in Indiana, Christine and Michael Barnett, determine that they are going to adopt her. And they eventually, over a few years, they decide that they are going to get rid of her. And they don't get rid of her in terms of sending her back to the orphanage or to a uh, adoption agency, but rather they legally change her name or legally change her age from eight to 22 and they do so by finding a doctor to sign off on documents that state that she's an adult. They were arrested recently after Michael had been um, interviewed by police. See, in 2012 and 2013, they abandoned her. Um, they legally changed her age from eight to 22 and they, bought her in a, they got her an apartment and placed her in an apartment and um, left for Canada because their young, their son, Jacob, is a prodigy. He is extremely smart. He is on the autism spectrum. And he is, he was accepted into a prestigious master's program in Canada. Now, <clears throat> Christine Barnett was interviewed by the Daily Mail. And this is really where all of this got horrifically sensationalized. And all of these dwarf comments came from because she told the Daily Mail that she was not eight years old when she adopted her, but she was an adult pretending to be a child, that she tried to kill them, tried to poison their coffee, um, stood over them with knives, pushed her into an electric fence, um, put her into psychiatric places that all said that she was a sociopath and a narcissist or antisocial behavior, which wouldn't be diagnosed in a child only once you're 18 or older. She somehow convinces a court to change her age from eight to 12 at the same time, eight to 22, at the exact same time that Jacob is uh, put into this program. It's not a coincidence. And I've said that all along. Now, a lot of you on this channel have watched my videos and have said, no, you're just lying, Katie. You are so lying. And I was like, no, I'm not. Because 
after I looked through everything and I listened to Christine's story and I listened to Michael's story and I looked at the police reports and I looked at the medical records that were released by them, it was very clear that doctors that, that took care of this little girl never once determined that she was an adult. Yet somehow Christine convinces a court to do so. So everyone has been calling this poor little girl a psychopathic killer in the media, smearing her. No one's interviewed her until today. Dr. Phil, someone that I don't always love, but recently he's showing me a better side of him. He was able to interview Lindsay Chrisley and give her a platform when her narcissistic, I believe narcissistic father has been abusing her in the public and scapegoating and using her as the scapegoat for his issues. He provided her a platform and he helped um, the Janny and Bodie Schofield be uh, get out of the the crux or the grasp of their mother, Susan Schofield. He's done some good things in the past year, and I would say this in this um, interview he did with Natalia further proves my point that Dr. Phil can sniff out a freaking lie like a fart in the car, and Dr. Phil was kind, he was conscientious, and he pointed out things that literally everyone in the media fails to see. When he talked to Natalia, she sat down with her adoptive, her now parents that are trying to adopt her but can't because her age is um, 30 years old, so they can't adopt her. But this amazing family in Michigan who has taken this child under their wings and had cared for them for seven years he sat down with Natalia and those and her parents, and they all talked about what they remembered. And Natalia said that she came to the United States through an adoption program. And Dr. Phil pointed out that when she was brought to the United States, she was brought with paperwork that showed her birth date. And so this notion that she orchestrated this master plan to scam people is ridiculous because she wasn't the one that created the paperwork and she wasn't the one that provided it to the adoption agencies. So it would have had to be someone else that came up with this crafty plan. And I wonder why nobody has pointed this out a million times in the media, okay? Then he asks her about what happened with the other houses. And, he, and she says that when she first came there, she was placed with this family who decided to adopt her and she was rough housing with one of her brothers and accidentally like landed on his arm and the mother thought that she intentionally tried to break her brother's arm and so she sent her back into foster care and then she was ended up with this other couple, the Pauls, who are in New Hampshire, who have since come out and publicly stated that they never thought that she was an adult. They, pro they have provided publicly in the media copies of her birth certificate and all the paperwork that shows that Natalia is only 16, 16 years old. And Natalia lived with them for two years and they wanted to adopt her, but they were unable to due to some like legal issues. And they said absolutely unequivocally, she was a child. Still. Then her birth mother came forward from the Ukraine, from Ukraine and said that she gave birth to her. She provided all the documents they were able to trace Natalia back to the orphanage and this birth mother had the exact paperwork with Natalia's information on it and she said, I gave birth to her in 2003. Thankfully, at the end of the interview, Dr. Phil said that he's actually working to arrange a reunification with Natalia and, his, and her birth mother. So that's like a really exciting part is that he is in the process of trying to reunite the two of them um, so she can actually meet her birth family in Ukraine. And that mother says that the, the Ukrainian birth mother says that she was forced to give her daughter up because she had a disability and the doctors basically said that she had to, not it wasn't a choice. And they said she would have no quality of life and she had to do it. And she said shortly before Natalia was adopted into the United States, she received a call that she was being sent to the United States, that it was going to be really good for her, um, and that they asked her to sign off on it, and she did. And she signed off, and Natalia was sent to the United States. That was all verified through the Daily Mail. So the same place that created the media frenzy by calling her the con artist dwarf then turns around and says, oh, just kidding, we found her birth mom, and she says she's a child. The daily fail for the fail again. 
So I have said all along that I believe that she is a child because there was absolutely no way. There was no way that there was this global conspiracy between Ukraine, Ukraine orphanages, United States adoption agencies, and Natalia to try to dupe the Barnetts, okay? So in her interview, Christine insists that she tried to poison her, she tried to kill her, she tried to throw her into an electric fence. So Dr. Phil sits down with Natalia, and she says that when she initially got to the Barnett's house, she was like really absolutely like she thought she finally um, found her family. She said that they were really like accepting of her at first, but she said that everything changed after she had to have her surgery. And she has a form of scoliosis and she has some disabilities that required, um, that required her to go through surgeries. And she said after that surgery, it was like something switched and everything that she did, Christine was like accusing her of doing things. So Dr. Phil asked about poisoning the coffee and Natalia said that there was a day that she was actually like trying to clean and because of her stature, she's short stature, um, she had to stand on a chair and she was using lemon pledge. And she said that Christine had a cup of coffee on the table and she pushed the coffee off the, like out of the way and then sprayed the pledge down on the table to wipe the table down. And she said that Christine walked in and said, you're trying to poison me. She also said that Christine would try to like take her to doctors and force her to say things like she had mental illnesses, um, force her to tell people things. Um, in terms of like the electric fence, she said that they went to a farm um, and it's amazing her memory, to be honest. That, that must be how traumatic this was for her because she said that she went to a farm with them and they were walking and she said that she has it due to her disability, she does have trouble walking. Um, and Christine was making it seem like, oh, she can walk. Remember how she said, oh, she jumped out of our hands and just ran into the beach and it was like no problem. She needs a walker to walk. I mean, it's pretty clear that the way that her, with her scoliosis, with her short stature, um, and with her just overall like bone structure, walking is not easy for her. She uses a walker. She um, has special shoes. Like it's not easy. And she said that she was tired and she sat down because her legs were hurting. And she said that Christine forced her to get up. And while she was getting up, she fell backwards again and then Christine fell backwards and then they fell into the electric fence and then Christine accused her of pushing her into the electric fence. They also noted, her new mother Cynthia noted that the orphan literally came out a year before, the year before they adopted them. So it was almost like they just came, they crafted this plan after this all happened. I mean, it's like perfect for them. So, Eventually, she says that she just, they decide to legally change her name, her age. And she said that she didn't even really understand what was going on. She wasn't really told anything, but she knew that they were leaving for um, Canada and she was supposed to have more surgeries. And she wasn't able to physically keep up with the family and what the family needed and what the family was doing. And um, they, Christine had written a book and she was starting to get all this notoriety for having this really like fam like smart kid. And she says that at that same time, they decided to change her age and she had no part of it. She was not there for it. And then they put her in an apartment and Dr. Phil was like, well, how did they do that to you? Like, how did they put you in an apartment? And she said that like Michael paid the bills, the Barnett's were around a lot that first year. Um, so she wasn't alone as much as you would have thought. They gave her food. Um, she had people that helped her. She went to school for a little bit. She had neighbors that helped her. Um, but it was after that she was evicted and after they left for Canada that she ended up in a second apartment where she really didn't know what to do and she didn't have resources at all. And that's when the mans met her. And Cynthia and her husband were told a friend told them that there was this little girl that needed help that was all alone and they came and they met her and they invited her over and they said that she never left their house after that um, and they said that in the seven years this is the part that gets me 
They said in the seven years that Natalia has lived with them, they have never had a single incident of psychotic behavior, never one threat, never a single like isolated incident of any issues related to violence. They said that she is the sweetest young girl that helps with her brothers and sisters, that helps make bottles and cuddles and babysits and is like super involved with the family and is a wonderful sister to her siblings, is a loving and bright young girl, um, that they were horrified when they found out that she had been abandoned, that they just, they couldn't let her stay there. And they said, had they not let her stay there, it could have gotten a lot worse um, because she had had more support in that first apartment. So <clears throat> she says that like, I, she doesn't even really remember like how she made it work, but it worked and then it didn't work. And then she was with the man's. And they've been never been able to change her age back. She said that they went to doctors in Michigan um, to do scans of her body. And they determined when she was in Michigan, where she now lives with them, that she is actually a child. But because the courts changed her age, she cannot get her age changed back because they don't have sufficient evidence. And they, the form of dwarfism that she has, or the form of dis, the, the form of the growth disorder that she has, makes so many of these scans impossible to de, like whittle down the age. But they use her birth date off of her birth certificate. They say she's 16. She goes by 16, even though legally she says she's 30. She's like trapped because she can't go to school. She can't do anything because the the state, the, the government looks at her as an adult. I was like not, I wasn't surprised at all. Not one iota was I surprised that this girl was a 16 year old. I said it from the beginning. I said it from the beginning. And they asked Cynthia, her mom, why Christine would do this. And she said that Christine had a young son that was a prodigy and that Natalia had a lot of surgeries she needed, like a lot. And she had a lot of needs that were not cohesive with what Christine and Michael could handle. And Christine had built up this image of being this like super mom, and now she was gonna go off to Canada, but a child that had so, such high needs, needing so many surgeries, um, needing so much help, didn't really fit in that lifestyle. Um, her husband said that he feels like she's hiding something, um, that she did this to protect something, like maybe her image. I um, mean, that's exactly what I said. I said she was abandoned at the exact same time they were going to Canada. They got rid of her because she was inconvenient because she either, one, couldn't travel to Canada due to her disabilities because sometimes you can't get a visa over there if you have specific disabilities. Two, she had needs they couldn't meet or wouldn't be able to meet in Canada. Or three, she couldn't fix her the way that she felt she fixed Jacob because she thinks that she somehow was able to make Jacob a prodigy, which doesn't happen. Your IQ is not, you can't make somebody's IQ be higher. It's just, it's impossible. Your intelligence is what your intelligence is. And I'm just like, Dr. Phil was like, this is bogus, you know? It's like, he totally called it. Like, she's not a sociopath. She's not a psychopath. And if, if a family literally says, she has literally lived with us for seven years and there's not been a single issue, not one. Like, and now they're stuck and they can't change her age. And now the media, I hope the media, like the Daily Fail and all the other outlets like Radar Online, and every other outlet that calls her the con dwarf or the psychotic dwarf, I hope they get egg on their face because this poor little girl has been smeared by Christine and all the other media outlets believing their bull crap story that she is a 30 year old girl. They said that she has never had her period, never. 
They said in the entire time that they've had her, she's not once menstruated. She said that at the time that Christine said that she had pubic hair, she didn't. And Christine told her that she was menstruating, but she wasn't. They said that she was, she had baby teeth when they met her and she was losing teeth. They took her to the doctors in Michigan and her growth plates hadn't fused yet and she was still growing. They like, <sighs> I'm so disappointed in the media here. I, I hope to God they sue them for defamation, for slander. I, I hope they, these tabloids that have been running this story will like stop because can I just say Dr. Phil was literally the first outlet to say young Ukrainian girl, not dwarf Khan. I mean, come on, this poor little girl. She's a minor child, a minor. And this is how people are talking about her. Um, And then they said that her, her, her parents want her, her parents, by the way, can't adopt her, get her services, or even enroll her in school because Christine, like, can't, changed her age. And she says that Christine forced her to say that she was going to harm people so that they would arrest her and take her to psych units, and then they would release her that night and say nothing was wrong with her. She would force her to like do things to get admitted into psych units. It was like she couldn't get doctors to sign off on it that she was an adult. So then she was going to go through a mental, the mental hospital way and the psychiatric route. And then she found a doctor to co-sign on it and convince the state. And her adoptive father now is like outraged by that because all they want is to be able to like help her get her an education, get her services get her like insurance, you know, like all of the things that a parent wants to do. It's these, the state of Indiana effed up. They need to change this girl's age back and they need to allow this girl to go to school. They need to freaking reimburse her for like all the years of trauma they have put her through. Christine needs to like go to prison. <laughs> So does Michael. There's absolutely, after watching this interview, if you guys watch it, there's no way she's an adult. Absolutely no way. No way. No way. And to all of you guys that said I was wrong and who told me I was not getting it right, mm -mm. I knew it all along. I knew, I smelled it. I smelled it just like Dr. Phil. That little girl was a inconvenience and she was disposable and Christine crafted a way to dump her to not have to take care of her that wouldn't hurt her image as being the super mom, my opinion. So this is the story of Natalia Grace. I hope you guys watch the Dr. Phil episode. There is plenty of clips on his YouTube where you can see enough of it to know that she's a child. And I hope you guys can reevaluate and think about how we talk about people with disabilities and not speak about their disability first, but the human first. I don't, I think more than anything, what bothers me the most is that her person was lost in this, her uniqueness, her value and her worth was plumped into dwarf con, dwarf psychotic felon. She's a little girl. Her name is Natalia. Use her name first. All right, you guys, let me know your thoughts. Do you believe it? Do you not believe it? Bye, guys.